Everyone has questions. Why am I here? Where will I go when I die? Is there really truth? But not everyone has biblical answers. Welcome to The Pastor Study, a ministry of pastorstudy.org. Join us now as we study the Bible to draw closer to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Here is Pastor Tom Brock. Welcome to The Pastor Study. Years ago, a friend of mine told me about his Catholic grandmother, and he said she committed some sin when she was 20 years old. And he said for 50 years, once a week, she's gone into the priest and confessed that sin over and over and over. <laughs> you know what I would say to her? 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So I'd say to her, you can stop that now. <laughs> what I want to do on this program, I want to ask you to memorize a Bible verse with me. Wherever you're at watching the show, can I ask you to say these words out loud wherever you're at? Please say this out loud, okay? 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Can you say the whole thing out loud, please? 1 John 1, 9, If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. For this program, we're going to go word by word through this wonderful verse and learn all we can. Let's pray. Father, we pray for anyone watching this show who committed a sin and they're haunted by it and they wonder if you can indeed forgive them. O oh Lord, Holy Spirit, come now and speak to each of us. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 1 John 1, 9, the first word is if we confess. That teaches this, forgiveness is conditional. If you confess, you're forgiven. If you don't, eh. Now, we hear people talk about the unconditional love of God. If they mean by that, that we're saved by the grace of God alone and not by our good works, then I'm in total agreement. But the word if means there's a condition to this. If you confess, fine. If you don't, you're in trouble. There's a condition. <clears throat> um, I, I, I am a member of the Missouri Synod Lutheran Church. It's a very conservative biblical denomination. Uh, during the winter, there was a big snowstorm, but I made it through the storm to my church for Sunday morning to discover they had uh, shut down. <laughs> so I turned my car around and I'm going home and I pass a liberal ELCA Lutheran church. There were a few cars in the parking lot, so I thought, okay, I'll go in. I parked, I got in, the, the service was going on, I sat down. The pastor gets up to preach on Romans chapter 10, quote, if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And then the preacher said, but what if you don't confess Christ with your lips and you don't believe in your heart that he rose from the dead? Does that mean you won't be saved? And the preacher said, not necessarily. And I felt like standing up and screaming, yes, necessarily. There is a condition to this. You have to believe in Christ to be saved. You have to confess your sins to the Lord. Next word, if we confess. The word we, plural, means this. Be part of the church. Every Christian is to be part of the church. There are no Lone Ranger Christians. Now and then somebody says, well, Pastor, I, go, I don't go to church. I just watch you on TV and you're my church. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. You can't get Holy Communion out of a TV set. You can't serve a TV set. One of the reasons we go to church is to serve the Lord in some way. Every Christian is to be part of the church. And now and then I get an email or a letter that goes like this. Pastor Brock, I don't go to church anymore. 
because the church is in darkness. They don't understand the Bible properly like I do. So now I just read my Bible on my own and I don't go to church. Well, read your Bible on your own. Hebrews chapter 12, that commands you to be in church. And then you listen, these people who think they alone understand the Bible properly, then you, then you read what they believe, it gets weird. So everybody, read your Bible daily by yourself, but be part of the church. If we, the church, next words, confess our sins. The word confess in the New Testament Greek literally means to say the same thing as, to agree with. So when you're confessing your sins, you're not justifying your sin, you're not saying everybody else does it, you're not saying it's not that bad, you're saying, God, I agree with you. That was a sin. If we confess our, next words, sins, I think the word sins, plural there, means get specific. You just don't pray now and then, okay, God, forgive all my sins. No, no, get specific. I think God wants us to confess our specific sins so he can deal with us and give us victory over those specific sins. Let me give you an example. <clears throat> Let's say you have a habit of saying, oh my God, which is a violation of the second commandment, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Can I encourage you to do this? Every time you say that, stop and say, God, please forgive me. And if you say it again, stop and say, God, please forgive me. I think confessing our specific sins puts a dent in our sin habits. <laughs> and you know, can I say this too about confession? If I sin at 10 o'clock in the morning, I don't wait till 10 o'clock that night to confess it. I Right there in my head, Lord, that was a sin, please forgive me, so I can move on. Do it immediately. If we confess our sins, next words, God is faithful and just. Now, that, that's a little bit of a strange, faithful. To, how is God being faithful by forgiving my sins? Well, do you remember the Last Supper? Jesus gives the bread and the wine, and he says to the disciples, this wine is my blood of the new covenant shed for the forgiveness of sins. When God died on the cross, when God gave us Holy Communion, he made a new covenant, a new commitment to us that you come to Christ I forgive your sins. He's keeping that promise of the new covenant when you come to him. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to the new covenant to forgive our sins. The New Testament Greek word for forgive is eami, and it means, quote, to let go, to dismiss, to remit a debt. It's like we've got this big sin debt that we owe God, and God says, I let you go. I forgive you. There's a story of two college roommates, great friends, but once they graduate, they lose touch. One became a, a judge, the other became a, a, a businessman. Well, the story goes that after many years, the businessman is caught embezzling funds. He has to go to court. Who does he stand before but his old college roommate? And the, the, the people are wondering, is he going to show partiality? What's the judge going to do? When it came time for sentencing, the judge gave the verdict and issued the greatest penalty under the law, a huge, a huge payment that this em embezzling friend was going to have to pay. But after he got done making that sentence, the judge took off his robe, walked around the bench, went down to the table, and whispered in his old friend's ear, and I will pay the debt. That's what God did for us. You and I are standing before God, our judge. We are guilty of a huge debt, but on the cross, God went to the cross, died on the cross to pay for our sins, and paid all our debt. That's why we're forgiven. I talked to a friend a while ago, and he owed a certain company $20,000. And he said to me, for years, they didn't come after me. But he said, this year, they came after me. I had to pay the debt. And I heard that and I thought, isn't it great God isn't like that? That God doesn't forgive your sins and then come after you. You know, I've had people ask the question, will God bring up my sins on judgment day? 
Well, I think God will probably talk to each of us about some stuff we need to hear about. But if you're sorry for your sins, you have put them under the blood of Christ, I don't think he brings it up. The Bible says God drowns them in the sea of forgetfulness. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive our sins, to let us go, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Here's the next lesson. God doesn't just forgive, he also cleanses. See, our sin makes us dirty. Our sin messes up our mind. It messes up our relationships with others. It can mess up your physical health. And so God doesn't just forgive you. He also cleanses you and makes you whole. So two men are walking down the street. One is a Christian man. The other is an atheist who owns a soap manufacturing company. They're walking down the street and the atheist says to the Christian, I don't think your religion works. Well, why not? Well, your religion came about 2,000 years ago. Look how dirty and filthy and messed up the world still is. Your religion doesn't work. They keep walking down the street. Here's a little boy on the side of the street playing in the mud. The Christian says to the atheist, I don't think your soap works. Oh, what do you mean? I, I have a fine product. What do you mean my soap doesn't work? Well, look at that little boy. Look how dirty he is. Your soap doesn't work. The man said, well, of course my soap works. You've got to apply it. And the Christian said, bingo, Jesus works just fine, but you have to apply him. Our sin is not only forgiven when we come to Christ, he starts to wash out the way sin has messed us up. All right, I want to close now just offering a few thoughts about confession of sin. Thought number one, don't underdo it, but don't overdo it. Some people underdo confession. Now and then they might say, oh God, forgive all my sins. No, that's underdoing it. The perfect prayer is the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our trespasses. We've, you know, God wants us to regularly talk to him about our sins. So if you don't regularly, daily, confess your sins to God, I do that. We sin every day in thought, word, and deed. Might as well talk to him about it. But on the other hand, don't overdo confession. Some people think if they don't confess all their sins before they die, they're not going to heaven. Is that true? No. You don't know half your sins. And if my salvation depends on me confessing all my sins before I die, nobody's going to be saved. Um, I have taught so many confirmation classes. Every year you get a new group of 13-year-olds, and I explain salvation, and then I'll tell them this story. Two Christians are driving in a car. They get mad at each other. And the one Christian says to his friend, well, G-D-U. And the other friend gets mad, well, G-D-U. And boom, they get hit by a truck. They didn't have time to ask for forgiveness. Did they go to heaven or hell? Some of the students, well, they went to hell. Well, why is that? Well, because they didn't have time to ask God forgiveness. And I say to them, so you getting into heaven is dependent on whether you had enough time to confess all your sins. And I said, you'll never, you'll never be able to do that. I, and I point to them, I point them to this, and I say, the only reason we get to heaven is Jesus paid for our sins, those sins you remember, the sins you've forgotten, the sins you've confessed, the sins you haven't confessed. In fact, when he died on the cross, he paid for all our sins, past, present, future, even the sins you haven't committed yet, if you believe in Christ, they're already forgiven. <laughs> so don't underdo confession, but don't overdo it either. Next thing to know about confession, know that forgiveness is possible only because of what Jesus did on the cross. Uh, the reason God forgives my sins is because somebody has paid for them. Let's say that you and I want to go to a movie. It costs $10 per ticket. You've got a nickel, I've got a dime. Which of us are getting in? Neither of us, unless someone comes along with $20, pays our way in. That's what Jesus was doing on the cross. The way we get to heaven is by his sacrifice. Again, so many people think you get to heaven by being good enough. Give up. You'll never be good enough. This is what gets us into heaven. Next thing to say about confession. Immediately do three things. When I was about 20 years old, 
I was kind of a guilt-ridden guy, still kind of am. <laughs> and I heard a sermon that changed my life. And the preacher said, every time you sin, immediately do three things. Number one, immediately confess it. God, I agree, that was a sin. Number two, immediately put it under the blood. God, I believe Jesus paid for this sin, so it's forgiven. And then he said, number three, immediately forget about it. God's forgiven you, forgive yourself, and move on. That's what I would say to that Catholic grandma. If you trust in Christ, the first time you ask for forgiveness, he forgave you, so forgive yourself and move on. One more thing to say about confession. Confessing to another helps. In 1 John 1, 9, it's talking about confessing directly to God. But in James chapter 5, it says, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another. I, I know someone who was in a Bible study with me many years ago. Then for 35 years, he turned away from the Lord, stopped going to church, stopped uh, following Christ. I would talk to him through, the, well, hallelujah. A few years ago, he came back to Christ. This time he joined a branch of, of Christianity where the, you confess your sins to the priest. <laughs> My friend has a pornography problem, and he says to me, now when I fall with pornography, I got to talk to the priest about it. And you know what? He doesn't like it, but he knows it's good for him. <laughs> I don't think you have to confess your sins to a Catholic priest or to a Lutheran pastor, although nothing's wrong with that. It's healthy. But at least find some Christian that you can talk to about your sins. Every Christian needs a prayer partner. Every Christian needs somebody you can talk to about your sins. James 5, confess your sins to one another. Let's put it all together. If salvation is conditional on whether you believe in Christ, we, be part of the church, confess, say the same thing God says about your sins. Our sins get specific. God is faithful and just to the new covenant to forgive us our sins, to let us go, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I love the old hymn from the 1700s about the forgiveness of sins. Let me just sing two stanzas. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains lose all their guilty stains lose all their guilty stains and sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains i love this verse the dying thief rejoiced to see that fountain in his day and there may I, though vile as he, wash all my sins away, wash all my sins away, wash all my sins away. And there may I, though vile as he, wash all my sins away, away. If you know you need the forgiveness of sins, there's one place you go to get that, to Jesus Christ. Amen. Hi, I'm Mona, and I'm filling in for Jackie today. We are now at the part of the show where we ask Pastor Brock questions regarding the Bible. Tom, first question. Mm -hmm. Will God forgive me if I, if I keep doing the same sin over and over? You know, Mona, the sermon that you just heard preached, yes. I preached that downtown at a Christian mission. And a woman interrupted my sermon and kind of, Pastor, if I keep doing the same sin over and over, will God forgive me? Well, the, the, the answer to that's a little tricky, but my first answer is, I sure hope so. Because haven't we all committed the same sin mm -hmm. sometimes more than once over and over? And, and, G, and Peter said, 
Jesus, how often do I have to forgive this guy? Seven times a day? And Jesus said, no, 70 times seven, 490 times a day. So if I have to do that for you, God's doing that much for me. So it is true that whenever you are sorry for your sins, you come to Christ for forgiveness. If you're sincere, you get it. You get the forgiveness. On the other hand, here's what I told the lady at the Christian mission. The people have heard this on the show before, but two ma uh, man number one is walking down the road. He slips and he falls in a mud puddle. He gets up, brushes himself on. He keeps walking. Later, he falls in another mud puddle, but he gets up, brushes himself That's a Christian. Mm -hmm. But here comes man number two down the road. He slips and he falls in a mud puddle. He pitches his tent in the mud puddle. He lives the rest of his life in the mud puddle. That person is not saved. Because the Bible teaches two things. If we confess our sins, God does forgive our sins. Hallelujah. 1 John 1, 9. Mm -hmm. But 1 Corinthians 6 teaches, but if you're living in it, you're, you're living in sin, you're living with your girlfriend, you're living with your boyfriend, you're living in your sin and you're not repenting, your soul's in trouble. You're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. So that's the best I can do. Hmm. Good answer. No. Do I need to confess to a priest or a pastor to be forgiven? Now, I'm a Lutheran, so you're going to get my, my view of this. Um, in the Catholic Church, you really need to go to the priest to get your sins forgiven, which I don't think is biblical. I do think it is biblical, though, to have somebody. You don't have to come to a Lutheran pastor or a Catholic priest, though nothing's wrong with that if they're doing it right. You know what you do? You confess your sins to a friend. Mm -hmm. who's a Christian, a mature Christian. I have a friend who I confess my sins to. And then it's nice when they pronounce what's called the absolution, where they tell you that because of Christ, your sins are forgiven. It's healthy to do that. I think every Christian needs a priest that you can talk to about your sins. If only a friend. Yeah, possibly. yeah, right. I committed a certain sin years ago that haunts me, and I can't seem to get it out of my mind. Any advice? Mm-hmm. Well, I'll, I'll preach again what I said. Confess it, but this person's maybe done that. Mm -hmm. Number two, put it under the blood and say, God, I trust Christ paid for this and so I'm forgiven. The third thing was to forget about it and move on. This person, if they're, they, they've received God's forgiveness, it's time for them to forgive themselves mm -hmm. and to stop beating themselves up and to not bring it up anymore. Just leave it under the blood. And if you uh, still think of it, well, uh, thank you, God, that you forgave that sin. Mm -hmm. Pray. What if I don't feel forgiven, even though I, I've confessed it to God? Yeah, and you know, I used to be in this trap of, I pray for forgiveness. If I didn't feel forgiven, I'd say, oh God, please forgive me. I, I would ask for forgiveness four or five times for the same thing. And then somebody pointed out 1 John 1, 9, you don't do that. You confess it once, you receive forgiveness, and then you move on. Otherwise, you're doubting that God kept the promise of 1 John 1, 9. So I, I, I try not to do that anymore. Our, our feelings can lie to us. They can deceive us. We follow the written word of God. The promises of God are sure. My feelings come and go, and my feelings can lie. Does God forgive the sins of those who are not Christians? I believe the answer is no. There's one, I mean, I, I, I love having a crucifix on my wall. I, mean, I know it's a Catholic thing, but mm -hmm. I, I have three of these on three different levels of my house, it reminds me how my sins are forgiven. My sins are forgiven only through Christ. And if someone rejects Christ, they've rejected the only way their sins can be forgiven. Hmm. Yeah. You said that forgiveness is conditional. Does that mean I have to do something to be saved? Uh, well, the, in Acts 16, the jailer said, Paul, what must I do to be saved? He said, believe in the Lord Jesus and you'll be saved. You do have to repent. You have to believe in Christ to be saved. I'll add, though, that can only be done by the Holy Spirit. So even the Holy Spirit gets credit for my repentance and my faith. So ultimately, we're saved by the grace of God totally, 100%. Do you have to do things to be saved? Well, you have to believe and repent, but that's something you can't do. That's something the Holy Spirit works in my heart. So even he gets credit for all of that. So again, we're back to, by grace you have been saved through faith, not your own doing, Ephesians chapter 2. Hmm. What is the difference between a mortal and a venial sin? Uh, again, I'm a Lutheran pastor, but Catholics believe in venial sins, which are the smaller sins, and the mortal sins, which are the sins that will land you in hell if you don't confess them to a priest. Okay. Uh, I, I heard a, pa a Protestant pastor saying, I, I like this, he said, every sin is mortal. 
every sin will land you in hell without the blood of Christ. So uh, the Catholic system is, is different from uh, what I believe on that. Yeah. So will God forgive the sin of murder? Yes, we know that because David committed murder and adultery. And if you read chapter 51 of Psalms where David finally confesses his sins, God forgives mm -hmm. him for all that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, do we have any other questions? Yeah, that you, you know, think? let's just take this time. We got about two minutes. Thank you, Mona, for for asking the questions today. Jackie's recuperating, and just pray for her if you would. But we got a, a little bit of time now, and just let me share with you what's happened to our ministry because of COVID. A lot of people see our show that have never seen it because they're not in church on Sunday morning. They're watching our TV show, and so we have gotten so many letters. We've gotten enough donations now so that we're on locally in various cities around the country, but we're on nationally on uh, the Christian Television Network and on uh, the National Religious Broadcasters Network. If you get, if you're watching this on DirecTV or Dish Network, those are the channels you're watching it on. But the the reason we're on is because of God's grace and. Mm -hmm because of your prayers. We get so many letters. Pastor Brock, we pray for you regularly. Thank you for your show. And somebody asked, you know, we're pretty blunt on this show that there's a heaven and hell and Jesus is the only way to heaven. We're blunt that sex outside of marriage is wrong, abortion is wrong, homosexuality is wrong. You'd think I'd get a lot of hate mail. Hallelujah. I get some, but I would say 98% are people saying, Thank you. I wish our pastor would bring this stuff up in the mm -hmm. pulpit. Thank you for preaching the Word of God. So just, you know, if the Lord nudges you to support our ministry, the more funds we get, the more cities we add to get our TV show. So people have been generous. You've been generous with your prayers. So we ask you to, to keep that up. If you've got a Bible question you'd like answered, feel free to send that in. I'd ask you to pray for our volunteers. I'm the only one that gets paid in this ministry, and it's a modest fee. I don't drive a Cadillac. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty frugal and everybody else is a volunteer. So pray for them and we'll see you next week at the Pastor's Study. Thank you for watching the Pastor's Study. You can watch more of our programs at pastorstudy.org. We are on the air preaching the gospel of Christ because of our generous support of you, our viewers. Would you consider supporting our ministry? You may do so at pastorstudy.org or write the Pastor's Study, P.O. Box 41294, Minneapolis, Minnesota 55441. May the blessing of our one triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you today and always. If you've been blessed by the pastor study, would you consider a tax-deductible gift to help us reach more people with the good news of Jesus Christ? You can donate at our website, pastorstudy.org, two S's, or mail a check to the pastor study. P.O. Box 41294, Minneapolis, Minnesota, 55441. May the Lord bless you and have a wonderful week.